A routine exploration took a sharp turn when a robotic diver, operated by maritime archaeologist Kara, latched onto a corroded container resting on the seabed. The team aboard the vessel watched through grainy monitors as the mechanical arm worked to reveal what was sealed inside. As the container's doors creaked open, the control room fell into stunned silence, their monitors displaying an unbelievable sight. Seeing the container's contents, they couldn't believe what they saw. How had this ended up at the bottom of the ocean? The supervisor was the first to find his voice. We have to call the U.S. Coast Guard, he shot one of the employees a look, who quickly scurried to the phone to make the call. Why did they have to call the Coast Guard? What would the Coast Guard uncover? And most importantly, how had it ended up at the bottom of the ocean? Before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any stories. How? Huh. They were trying out the new prototype of their robo-diver. This one would be able to go to a larger depth without there being any issues with the pressure until a certain limit. Kira, a maritime archaeologist, and others from the organization were looking at the live footage together. Kira kept steady as they went deeper. She definitely wanted to find out what that was. She brought the robotic diver closer and noticed that the purple shade changed to red. It was a container and it was huge. As far as she was aware, there hadn't been any shipwrecks as of recently and this site hadn't been given as a place that had to still be excavated. They believed its insides to be typical of a container, some goods that had never reached their destination. However, Kira couldn't shake the feeling in her underbelly that it would be something totally unexpected. As she opened the doors, everyone looked at the screen broadcasting the monitor footage with bated breath. They paled at the revelation of what was inside. How could this be here on the bottom of the ocean? The supervisor was the first to respond. He grabbed one of his employees, called the U.S. Coast Guard, who said, and one of his employees immediately ran off to get the phone and make the call. The distant hum of an engine grew louder, drawing the attention of Kira and her team towards the horizon. A sleek white Coast Guard vessel sliced through the waves, its approach swift and purposeful. The vessel came to a halt beside their ship and a team of Coast Guard officers clad in their crossed uniforms boarded. I'm Commander Walsh, the leading officer announced, extending a firm hand to Kira. We received your distress call. His eyes, sharp and assessing, quickly took in the anxious faces of Kira's crew. We need to secure the area immediately, Commander Walsh decided after a brief huddle with his team. Swiftly, they deployed marker boys around the container's location, establishing a restricted zone. As the robotic diver pried the container further open, a cascade of colors and shapes spilled onto the monitors. Inside lay an array of art pieces, each seemingly more valuable than the last. Kira and the Coast Guard team leaned closer to the screens, their eyes widening in recognition. Isn't that? Kira's voice trailed off as she pointed at a painting, its vibrant hues still discernible. Commander Walsh nodded. Yes, that's a piece reported stolen from a Parisian gallery years ago. One by one, they identified several artworks, each with its own story of disappearance. The task of documenting the recovered art began. Kira, with a small team, meticulously recorded each piece, noting its condition and any identifying marks. We're dealing with international theft, Commander Walsh stated gravely. The discovery on the ocean floor was more than a treasure. It was a puzzle that spanned continents and decades. The first step was to trace the container's shipping records. In his checks, however, it revealed discrepancies. The container's ID number didn't match any in the shipping registry. It's as if it never existed, one of the Coast Guard analysts remarked. This anomaly was the first hint that what they had found was not just lost, but deliberately hidden. Undeterred, the team delved deeper. As they pieced together the fragmented record, signs of tampering began to emerge. Dates and destinations had been altered, and some records were missing entirely. Realizing the scope of their investigation was expanding, the team reached out to international authorities. They shared their findings with shipping companies and law enforcement agencies worldwide. Embassies, cultural institutions, and governments began demanding updates and asserting claims. The weight of responsibility grew heavier on Curie's shoulders. This was no longer just a discovery, but a global incident with diplomatic ramifications. The task of preserving the water-damaged art was daunting. Kira collaborated with conservation experts to stabilize and restore the pieces. Each artwork was carefully extracted from the container, documented, and treated with the utmost care. This delicate operation was a race against time to save these cultural relics from further deterioration. 
Kira's team, along with intelligence officers, started collecting detailed information on the shipping company's routes and records. They combed through manifest bills of lading and crew lists, looking for anomalies. Faced with these obstacles, the decision was made to go undercover. Gents were inserted into various levels of the company's operations, posing as employees and contractors, so the team knew that the key to cracking the case lay in understanding the company from the inside. The deeper the undercover agents delved, the more complex the web of deceit appeared. In a twist of fate, a former employee of the shipping company reached out, offering to help. This individual, disillusioned by the company's illicit activities, was ready to talk. The former employee revealed a wealth of information about the shipping company's operations, including details of how the art smuggling was orchestrated. Armed with this new information, the team began to connect the dots. They were able to link the mysterious container directly to specific smuggling activities orchestrated by the shipping company. As the chapter closed, Kira and her team stood on the brink of exposing the entire operation. The evidence was in their hands and the culprits were within their reach. This container was not just a random lost cargo. It was a linchpin in a series of covert smuggling activities. Dot. The number was the thread that, once pulled, began to unravel the entire operation. It was the evidence they had been searching for. With this new evidence, the focus sharpened on the shipping company's top executives. These individuals, once just names on a corporate roster, were now prime suspects in a major criminal operation. Kira, alongside the Hay and law enforcement, faced the shipping company's executives. The air was thick with tension as accusations were laid out and evidence presented. The culprits, cornered and out of options, faced the reality of their situation. Faced with overwhelming evidence, the smugglers began to crack. One by one, they started confessing, revealing the extent of their involvement. The truth, long buried under layers of deceit, was finally coming to light. With the culprits apprehended, attention turned to the stolen artworks. Plans were swiftly put in place to return these priceless pieces to their rightful owners. Museums, galleries, and private collectors around the world awaited the return of their treasures. The culprits faced the full force of the law, with legal proceedings initiated against them. The shipping company, now exposed, faced severe repercussions. Amidst this, Kira was celebrated for her pivotal role in solving the case. Her dedication and tenacity had been crucial in bringing the smugglers to justice and recovering the stolen art. It was a victory not just for her, but for cultural preservation worldwide.